Hello everyone, thank you for joining this webinar. Uh, today we are going to talk about item planning and uh, it's one of the 20 minute sessions where we'll take a deeper dive into the EAM functionality within Business Central provided here by us, Dynaway. If we go to the next slide, you can see that uh, on the left we have Christoph and Christoph will take you through the presentation today. And if you have any questions, please use the chat log and we'll answer those as we go along. Uh, my name is Mikkel and I'll be here to support Christoph if there are any questions uh, that you may have. But uh, for the next 20 minutes, we'll entertain you with the item, item planning. So Christoph, it's uh, over to you. Thank you, Mikkel. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so let me just uh, show you what we have today. Um, so, um, we will talk about the item planning and uh, many of uh, you are asking uh, if we can plan the items when we are doing the maintenance. So what we have in Business Central uh, and in Dynaway EAM, uh, we have something which is called work order plans. Uh, I was uh, showing it uh, uh, also on uh, one of the other session. Uh, uh, so what we have on the work order plan is that we can see for what asset, of course, we are doing the maintenance, uh, but also when we are doing the maintenance, which for us is very important at this moment. So you know that we have uh, uh, four frequencies, uh, four frequencies type, um, and uh, one of it is one off, so just one specific day. Then we have a counter and a calendar, so counter based on some of the counter uh, values, and, uh, and that's something which we also cover in those 20 minute uh, sessions. And calendar, which is for us, uh, for example, every month, every Tuesday. Why it's quite important? Because based on that system, we need to know uh, what items uh, we need to uh, and when we need uh, those items. So uh, we have uh, we have all those four uh, frequencies which can tell us when we will need to have uh, the items. What items we need on the work order plan? You will find the session uh, section which is uh, uh, which is uh, called items, and you will see the items which we have, uh, which we need. So all our spare parts, what we will need to do this, uh, uh, this maintenance. If we will um, a little dig into it, so if I will open the card uh, for the item, so uh, for those who uh, already use Business Central, uh, by item we mean uh, all things which are on our inventory uh, um, and it's not only spare parts for the maintenance but also uh, also uh, all other uh, items like finished products like raw materials and so on so all the things which we uh, uh, use in our organization and a uh, few things which i would like to highlight here is uh, one is that we always need to have a, a base unit of measure so uh, what is the uh, a unit of measure for our uh, our item and for example it can be pieces it can be liters if we are talking about the oil or anything else uh, uh, what you can uh, imagine and uh, uh, if we uh, have that uh, the next thing which we need to do for Dynaway specifically is uh, fill the tab which is called maintenance and we need to mark that this is the maintenance item. That means that we in Dynaway will see only the items which we have, uh, which we have marked as a maintenance items. So uh, what system knows about our items? Uh, it, for example, knows what is the uh, cost of items, how much uh, we pay uh, to our vendors if we have a purchase uh, price list, but also knows how many of the items we have on the specific location. So what uh, 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 we need to do in the uh, work order uh, plan and when we uh, release the work order plan, system will know when we will need and the items right so let me uh, show you one plan which i have it is based on the calendar it says that i need to do the maintenance every first day of the month 
right? So this is what I set up. So when we release it, when we calculate, when we simulate the work order plans, we can see the instances. And instances is when system knows when we will uh, need to do the maintenance. So you can see that I have every uh, for next year uh, I have all my maintenance every first uh, first uh, uh, day of the month. Right. So uh, this is what a system knows. But system also knows based on our lines with the uh, with the item that we have two items which are needed. So you can see that we need these two items uh, for our work order plan and there uh, we need to buy them for the location code which is work H1. Uh, why for this? I haven't set anything on the work order plan with the location. This is because our asset is on the H1 uh, location the asset location and our uh, location uh, for the asset is connected with the warehouse location. So system based on the asset location knows where we will need to buy uh, the, uh, the uh, spare parts. So all our spare parts are on some location. So if you have, for example, many, uh, uh, many warehouses where you keep your uh, spare parts and for example, you have uh, uh, two warehouses over two con uh, one country, right? Or for example, you have multiple countries uh, um, and then you can uh, define where you would like to buy the, uh, the items. So uh, when we know that uh, and system knows that, so let's go to the, uh, uh, to my other work order plan, uh, which I based on the counter. And system also try to predict uh, when we will need them. Uh, so based on the uh, information which we provide to the system about the uh, about the counter, system try to simulate our work order plan and know that we will need to do it every 100 hours, which we uh, uh, which we um, uh, 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 which I set up that it should run every 100 hours of running of this machine and system based on this information and based on information about the counter readings try to predict when we will have that. So as you can see I have totally different dates than in my calendar view but I still have uh, information about the, uh, my uh, items which are needed. So if I know that uh, those two uh, things. Uh, uh, I also can go to my item and let's I me mean, just open my item list and we remember that it was number 10 so let's go to my planetary shaft. Uh, when system uh, knows that we need it for the purchase of, uh, for the uh, maintenance we can see that in the item availability. So for example I can see it by item availability by event and uh, if I will do that, let me just change the view, let's say for months, uh, we will see uh, in each month how much we will need. So uh, you can see that in January, I already uh, planned some purchase uh, for this item. Uh, so uh, I will have one scheduled receipt for that. But in February, I already have one maintenance work order. So it's already uh, set in stone that we will do this maintenance and we need the item for that. We still didn't have anything, we didn't receive anything, uh, but uh, system knows that after these two transactions I will be zero at the end. Uh, what happening then uh, in uh, January, in uh, uh, let's say April, you see that I have a maintenance, but I have a simulated work order, right? Uh, why simulated work order? This is based on our uh, uh, based on our uh, work order plan, which we uh, which we uh, created, and system predicts that we will need this uh, this item also in April, uh, because uh, uh, this is what work order plan says so. Will it happen? We don't know. 
it may happen, may not, because everything can happen with this asset in the future. But at this moment, system thinks we will need it. Right, so if I will uh, see uh, all of that, you can see that at the end of uh, December this year, I will be over at the minus 10 pieces with my uh, with my item. So this is what we know uh, based on the maintenance. We also can uh, go little uh, little uh, farther and uh, um, with our availability, we can see availability, for example, by period or by location, and then we will see where uh, uh, when we need the uh, on which location we need uh, we need our uh, our items and if I will just let's say do this by month again and uh, we are now maybe by year it will be a little uh, better view you see that I have 11 uh, pieces of my planetary craft where I need them if I will click here you can see that I see simulated work orders nine pieces so it can happen and something which we already plan to for the maintenance work orders i already have two pieces if i will click it further i can see why i need it so i can see the document number and i also can open it the same with the uh, simulated work order if i will click here i can uh, i can see why i need it i need it for this plan and when I need it as well. Um, but of course, what we else need to do with that, uh, we know that we should buy it, right? So how to uh, how to do it? This is manual, and no one expects that you will go to uh, uh, to each card and check if we have items or we don't have items. Um, for that, uh, Microsoft. Uh, have uh, Microsoft Business Center have a functionality which is called requisition worksheets. Uh, work sheet. And if I will open my requisition worksheet and let me uh, just delete everything what I have here, so I will just mark uh, all of that and delete it. Uh, and I can calculate the worksheet. Right, so I can take some of items which I need. I just took those two, but uh, you don't need to filter anything. I need also to say, this is the starting date. This is the ending date. When I would like to do it, I will do it for whole year. So let me, uh, uh, let me just run it. And as you can see, system propose me some lines. So I see that uh, I need this item, which is my planetary shaft, which we were showing, uh, uh, showing, and uh, a system automatically, uh, automatically uh, shows me when I need it. And this is based on our work order plan. So system knows, ah, okay, first of uh, first of uh, March, I will need this uh, this piece, so I should buy it. Right, but of course you see that we have a lot of quantities, a uh, lot of lines, and if we want to place one order per month, that's fine. We can create a work order, uh, so purchase order from here. But uh, based on that, uh, what uh, uh, what we know and what system is capable of, we can do some small adjustment to our planning. So uh, a few things which I can say to the system. Uh, which can be useful for you when you are doing the planning is that for example you can set up the specific uh, if we choose the reorder policy we can uh, specify the safety stock for our asset if for our item also if i would like to do one purchase order for the whole year i can do that as well so i can just accumulate my period to 12 months and then instead of many lines, I will have just one line. As you can see, there is quite a lot of other uh, things as well here, which you can use. So you can uh, uh, use the reorder point, you can use reorder quantity, you can specify what is your maximum inventory and how you uh, order it. So for example, I'm always ordering minimum 20 pieces and maximum uh, eight pieces. Uh, 30 pieces. So this is all uh, what you can uh, set 
in the item card and system will automatically uh, uh, use this information. So if I uh, will go now to the requisition worksheet, and uh, I will again delete, uh, delete this to show you the difference. Calculate plan. Uh, this time I, oh, I will do it for both of the assets. Right. And as you can see, now I have the different, I have uh, one line only, and uh, this is my 12 pieces. But okay, why I need those 12 pieces? And if I will go to function, which is called order tracking, I will see why I need it. So you can see I need it for my two work orders, which I have. So work order number one, work order number two, this is what we already set in stone, we should do it. But we also can see the work order plan and system says that for this work order, I need 10 pieces. If I would have many work orders for the same asset, for the same item, uh, then you will see all of that uh, here as well. So uh, of course I can uh, click a show button and then I will move uh, uh, automatically to my work order plan or work order card if needed. Let's close it. So uh, you also can see that system proposed me because I made some differences, uh, some changes to our plan. System proposed me to cancel the work the purchase order as well if I need. So what I can do from the worksheet, and sorry that I'm uh, unclicking everything because I just want to do those two. Uh, you can see uh, that I have a direct cost already. I have a quantity. Uh, I have also the vendor number because I can set up it on the asset, uh, sorry, on the item card, but I also can use uh, it without a vendor card and just a vendor number and I can just put here a vendor number manually and what I can do I can just click uh, carry out action message and all of those messages uh, which are approved will be uh, done so let's click OK and uh, now that's all what I needed to do to have a purchase order all right so if I will go to the purchase orders You will see that I already have one purchase order, and uh, I assume this is uh, my purchase order which I need. It's automatically for my 12 pieces for my item, which we have planetary shaft. And because we have also the pay, uh, purchase price in the system, system automatically know that for this vendor, I need to pay $100 for this. Uh, for this. And of course, as you can see, the location code is warehouse H1 because our asset locations told me that I should pay it to this one. So from that, I can, uh, of course, uh, receive items and then I can use them on my, uh, on my work order and I will not have a problem with my, uh, with my inventory and I will have information that I have 12 pieces uh, on my inventory already and when I will consume it, system will know that as well and will try to match our uh, planning parameters for the item. So that was all which I would like wanted to uh, show you today. Uh, I will go back uh, to the presentation and Nico, uh, back to you. Thank you very much, Christoph. It's uh, very impressive the the whole flow there about you know maintaining your equipment, making sure that you have the spare parts on stock, cooperation with uh, your planning and purchase department, automatic replenishment. So it was a good example to how it all links into Business Central. And as you see here on the list, we have some other on-demand webinars. Some of them show Dynaway specific, uh, but also uh, some of the other ones, they will show how it links into, for example, also fixed assets. So you could follow the, the cost from a finance perspective. So all of the ones here on the list are the ones who have been completed. Uh, the one from today will also be on the website shortly. And if we click one more time, you can see that there are some uh, future ones coming up. Uh, so next week it's around counters, uh, after that it's on uh, round and inspections and then of course we also have failure reporting, or uh, sorry, failure registration within the system. 
Uh, and again, all links back to the equipment and maintenance of your assets. So uh, that was it for today. I really hope you, you liked the show and uh, please go back to dinoway.com if you want to find more information or feel free to reach out to us if you have any additional questions. Uh, with that being said, I want to wish you all a very good day and see you soon again. Thank you. Bye-bye.